Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today I want to talk a little about piano recording. I've been a lot in a lot of studios in Los Angeles lately, and some have these beautiful large rooms for pianos, and some have these small rooms for pianos. And I've been noticing, you know, a difference in the recording of the piano in, in different studios depend upon room size and volume. Of course, you know, that's what I would listen for and not really enjoy the music. <laughs> but what do you do, you know? So I've been noticing a difference. If we keep the source constant, the size of the piano constant, most of the pianos I've been listening to are small grands or full-size grands. So it's a pretty big energy source. If you think of the piano as a speaker, and in the bed of the piano, really, this is our speaker. So it's radiating energy upward. It's radiating energy down to the floor also, of course. And then it's radiating energy this way, depending on frequency. So it's this real kind of a 360 degree energy rating device. So what I've noticed in a lot of studios is... Uh, this area here underneath the piano from the bed to the floor well obviously this is a very very short distance and we all know from our past uh, instructional videos that you know we have to have distance frequency distance all these are dependent upon each other so we have to have some distance for the energy to uh, unfold and not be uh, restricted in any form or fashion. So what do we get in this area? Well, we get what's called comb filtering. And, and you all know from past videos that, you know, this is the interaction of the piano to the floor, the floor to the piano, the piano to the floor, the floor back to the piano. It's this interplay of energy uh, going back and forth, kind of trapped in this distance and time domain. Well, that produces noise. You can hear this. All right, this is very audible. Uh, depending on microphone positioning and placement, too, you, you, you have to be very, very critical. But what I notice is that the uh, no studio really deals with this. They have the piano flat on the floor, wood floor, carpeting, or something like that. And it really doesn't matter what the size or the volume of the room is. So this is a really critical area. If you want to test this out, and we've done this before, and I'm going to do another video, putting some full sheets of just foam underneath the piano when you're uh, playing or recording, and listen to the difference, and then you'll you'll get the noise and the comb filtering interaction that goes on there. Another issue I've been noticing is that there's a big difference in the recording quality between those that leave the lid on and those that take it off. Those that take it off seem to have a more open and spacious sounding piano. Now, makes sense, logically, but those that have it off also have very high ceilings with usually some form of acoustical treatment. It's usually diffusion. So by taking the lid off, the lid is, would be kind of like, you know, speaker boundary interference effect, basically. Your sound source is slow close to a surface or a wall, the lid, that, you know, you're going to get all these spurious reflections going everywhere. Now, that may be desirable, but I find the best quality recordings are those where the energy comes off the bed without striking an object first, such as the lid, going to the ceiling, and then whatever the ceiling treatment is doing. If it's diffusion, that's great. If it's absorption, okay. So whatever the treatment of the scene, so the energy is kind of free to be direct energy, at least direct towards the ceiling. So a lot of issues here with piano, and I'm noticing a lot of patterns in these recording studios that that I see. So we're gonna we're gonna do something about this. We're gonna do some uh, testing, and we're gonna develop some products that go underneath the piano that are really portable and and put in and tunable, uh, depending on you know, what kind of piano uh, that you're playing, what kind of energy that you're doing. So take in all the radiation patterns of the piano. Don't interrupt them. Put them in a room that's treated so the energy can live. Uh, uh, tune this area here underneath the piano, and obviously watch how close we place the piano to room boundary surfaces because we don't want any speaker boundary interference effect, which is a cousin to comb filtering. So more on this later for future projects and uh, 
Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you. And please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, send me a, an email, info at acousticfields.com, and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week, so stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.